Elmore Leonard is here. He has been called the greatest living writer of crime fiction, that by the New York Times. In 50 years, he's written more than 40 books, 43, including this one. They include Up in Honey's Room, The Hot Kid, Mr. Paradise, and Glitz. The newest novel is called Road Dogs. I am pleased to have Elmore Leonard back at this table. Welcome. Charlie, thank you. Um, so here we revisit in Road Dogs mm -hmm. some characters we know. Characters that I liked especially, and I knew that I could put them to work and get them talking. Because you knew their voice? I knew their voice, I, and I knew what, what, what they were up to, usually what they were up to. Um, but because they, my characters have to be able to talk. I don't like to dis describe scenes and then put people in it and then, as from my point of view, describe how they're talking. I want to be remain invisible and let them tell the story, carry it along. And um, so that the, the character has to be able to talk, and if he can't talk, he doesn't make it, or he gets shot <laughs> along the way. You know. So you revisited these because? Jack Foley ended up back in prison after he was out for a while in, uh, in, uh, what was the, the book? The, out of Sight. Out of Sight. And he goes back to Not serve... Not a bad movie, either. It's a good movie. He goes back to serve 30 years, runs into his friend, um, another inmate, Kundo Ray, yeah. who I used in the early 80s in La Brava. Right. And I liked Kundo Ray a lot because he was a little, he was a go-go dancer. And uh, he was the cat prince. He wore little cat whiskers yeah. and uh, danced uh, mainly. And, and Kundo's been done well since he's been out. He's done very well, and he, he has bought property in Venice, Venice Beach. Right. And when when Foley gets out, he says, "Go to Venice Beach and uh, uh, use one of my homes, and but also keep an eye on my wife." Yes. Dawn Navarro, who's a psychic. <laughs> yes. I think she's a psychic, yeah. because I'm not actually sure. Maybe she does some psychic things, right. but I don't know if she's, you know, all the way psychic. So, of course, as soon as Foley meets Dawn Navarro, and Foley, incidentally, yeah. is a bank robber. He's yeah. robbed 200 and something banks. Yeah, but, but you're now thinking about George Clooney in the way you describe Foley. Exactly. Clooney played Foley and out of sight. Yeah, and I, and I can hear him. I can hear Clooney talk. George Clooney, sure. That and, made it easier. And so what's going to happen between Dawn and Jack? Well, they're going to get it on. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> they have a good time together until Kundo shows up. He and... gets out of prison a couple of weeks later. And then uh, I <laughs> they think... They become the road dogs. <laughs> no, the road dogs are are, are buddies who help right, each other, right, right, who right. watch each other's back. So now he he doesn't know if he can trust his road dog buddy. Right, right. And 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 all the, this time, Jack Foley is thinking that he, Kundo is going to ask me to get involved in some kind of crime. He's put up thirty thousand dollars, so the lawyer will. He must he must want something for that. But it, but it doesn't happen. When you created this, when you decided to go in this direction, how, did you know exactly what was going to happen? Oh, or you no, just had no, these characters no. and you turned them loose and they wrote the book for you? Well, they, they helped some. <laughs> but, uh, no, I like to make it up as I go along. And, and just things occur. So you occur. don't have an end in sight, necessarily? No, I have never. I never have an end in sight. Never. Let's see what happens. And I'm as interested as, as the reader, I hope, as the reader. Because yeah. every time I sit down in the morning to write, I'm, I'm going to get into a scene. And that, to me, is what it's all about. Get these people acting, talking together, being themselves. And let's see what happens. And things happen. Let me go back to Road Dogs, the title of the book again. Uh, that's a term of art used in prison, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and how do you define it? How do they define it? It's buddies in prison uh, who are not lovers at all, but who, who respect each other and are looking out for each other. They're watching each other's back. And if one guy gets into a hassle with somebody, then his buddy is going to follow him into it 
and it's going to be involved too. Janet Maslin wrote a nice, interesting review about this, and she talked about how your use of the word chase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he goes to a priest. He goes, yeah, to go to confession. First Good. time in 27 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, the priest asks him if he, uh, the priest, it's a Monsignor, who must suspect that, that he, he doesn't, is not attracted to women. And he said, uh, you, you're, he asks about that. And he says, but you remain uh, chaste. And he says, well, he says, uh, if I like the guy, he don't have to, <laughs> to chase me. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, do you do a lot of research? A researcher does. <laughs> he does an incredible amount, especially with the book I'm working on, which is about the, the Somali pirates. Uh, pirates. Yeah. I, in fact, as as the uh, the American ship was hijacked, and the three Somalis were pirates were in this little lifeboat right. with the captain right. of the ship. Who I just met this weekend. A very nice guy. Very yeah? impressive guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He that. was down at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, uh, when, when, the, uh, when the three snipers shoot the three guys one shot each, right. then uh, it... And I'm writing it that day in my book. You're writing... From the point of view of a woman who is a documentary filmmaker, and she's gone over to the Gulf of Aden and the Indian Ocean to shoot the pirates because she sympathizes with them. She thinks to that they To film been, the pirates. Yes, to film the pirates. Right. With, her, with her assistant, Xavier, who is a six-foot-six black man who was a seafarer, and he's yeah. been through this area 40, 50 times. Before the pirates, or maybe... Okay, but then when did you began to read about... This is interesting. This is November. For book number 44. Do we have a title for book 44? Djibouti. Djibouti. So you began to read about what pirates are doing off the coast of Sudan, right? Mm-hmm. And you thought, this is interesting. I thought it was a terrific idea. And in, in November, though, when I started, there wasn't much about them in the press that my, my researcher had to dig for it yeah. in publications. And all what did he go find out, or she... Well, he found out, he's been with me since 1980, digging up stuff. 29 years he's been with you. Greg Sutter, right. yeah, and he's really good at it. He gives me, I've got stacks in my, in my where I do my writing. Um, he found out that these guys had to resort to piracy, they say, to stopping ships and fining them, F-I-N-E. Right. Because they're, they've... Their their uh, fishing grounds have been messed up, and toxic waste has been dumped there, and so they have to do something. They have to make a living. So we decided to charge these ships that are going through yes. and dumping their garbage into our fishing grounds, and we charge them several million dollars <laughs> each. <laughs> so it's a bit like Robin Hood. Huh? It was like, yeah, it's, it's, that that word has been used in uh, conjunction with them. Yeah. In fact, I used it before it came into the press even. I know so much now about these pirates, see. All you right. So of, so you get interested in this. Yeah. And when do you start creating the character of the documentary filmmaker and her 6 foot 6 um what, what was right it? Right away. Right away. Right away. Because so you need a peg. What, to, what's to, my point of view? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your point of view? That's the that's the most important thing, and it's in it's Dara Barr, the documentary filmmaker, and she's made three documentaries already that won awards. <laughs> this is she, great. She lives in New Orleans. She yeah. uh, Katrina hits. She walked out the door and shot Katrina. You yeah. see, won an award, and uh, she shot. Uh, Oh, oh, well, a couple other things that were that were successful. So now she decides to do this, but she, she has in mind other ideas first. She goes to see a uh, very expensive um, escort, a woman, mm -hmm. and asks her about it. And you, there's a little scene between the two of them. That this this woman who she's walking around in the her apartment, mm -hmm. talking to her topless, complaining as she's getting dressed, you know, and she says, uh, 
what do I, how do I end up doing this? You know, I become the madam in some, uh, some joint Escort over trip. on the right. west side right. that's got three bedrooms in it and three girls who are waiting, you know. There's no... Uh, and then another guy wants her to do a movie about AA. AA stories about driving down the wrong way on the street, you know, things like that. And she said, well, it, I should see it. I would have to see it. I can't just ha have this told to me. Up. And then she uh, she did another one. I forgot what it was. This is the documentary she'd done? Yeah. All right. So, But how does she hit on the idea of going to do the Somali pirates? Well, she, she starts to read about it. Ah. And her assistant, who has been through there as a mariner, has, has tells her, I've been saving the clippings on this. This is this is the thing to do. Let's go do it. Let's yeah. go do it. And I'll I'll get a boat for us, and we'll go out in the Gulf in the uh, Bay of Gulf of uh, Aden. And we'll interview these characters. Exactly. Well, the first night they're in Djibouti, she flies in from Paris. The first night in Djibouti, she meets a successful pirate who's driving around in his Mercedes. He takes her for a little spin. And, he th and he's very successful. He owns several ho homes. And, um, and he shows off, but it's okay because he's yeah. having fun. And she understands that, you know. Then she meets another guy who, uh, who's, uh, who's Somali who went to Oxford and has a British accent. And he's called, his name, his first name was Ari. Yeah. And they all, they, at Oxford, they called him Harry. <laughs> and he loves that, <laughs> so he plays on that, you see. Oh, boy, you are something. So where are you in the book? Well, 138. 138 pages? <laughs> yeah. You look at it that way? You're well, 138 pages in? Well. And, you, and so, therefore, you, what are you I'm looking for? Are you looking for 300 pages? How many pages are you looking yeah, for? Yeah, I'm looking for 300, 350. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit into the second act. Let me... There are other characters, too, you know. What makes good crime fiction? That's My what style. I want to know. My style. No question about it, I'm sure. It's the way I see the people and the way I... I have a feeling for them. I, I have an affection even for, well, certainly most of them. Yeah. And you write characters, characters, people with character, people with personality, people yes. with defining... Even minor characters. Even minor characters. Yeah. That's why they make good movie yes. stories. When they're not ruined. But <laughs> <laughs> how many have been done well? Um, Out of sight. Out of sight. Get Shorty. Get Shorty, yeah, of course. Uh, Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown. Oh, Jackie Brown. Would, but the director was Tarantino, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And he stayed closer to the book than the others. I was mm. surprised to see that. Yeah. He's got a new war movie out that evidently. Is. That's what I... Un, Inglorious Bastards. In, spelled... B-A-S-T-E-R. B-A-S-T-E-R-D-S, yeah. something like that. And Inglorious has another sort of thing. It's, Why did he do that on Bastards? I don't know. He said that's the way it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's a funny guy. But he took, I mean, what he did with, with uh, Jackie Brown. You see, I remember she was an African-American detective, wasn't she? No, she, she was, was an airline stewardess. She was an airline stewardess? And this guy talks her into bringing money. He's selling arms in the Bahamas, and she's on oh, that flight. Oh, something else, yeah. So she brings, when he has a payoff in the Bahamas, she brings it back to yeah. him, and then she's caught by a couple of cowboy uh, yeah. federal agents. Do you read, any, do you read anybody else um, and look at the writing or look at aspects of it and say, wow, uh, even though I'm 82, 82? Oh, 83. 83. Even though I'm 83, and even though I have all the praise that I have received, I can still get better. So do you ever read anybody oh, yeah. and say, man... Uh, Pete there's... Dexter I like. Really? Pete Dexter. Uh, who else? What, is, what about Pete Dexter? What do you like about Pete Dexter? His, 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 his writing is always fresh. Mm. And um, he's, he's just, he's so good with characters. Because I think the characters are the main thing, and, and so I spend time with them, and I stay with them all the way. And then, finally, I have to think of a plot. You know, you've got to think of 
a story. Yeah, but characters for you make the story. Yeah, right. Once you've decided, once you have decided what the game is, mm -hmm. the characters for you define what happens. Yes, right? exactly. You yeah. The game may be pirates. The game may be two people who come together. Uh, and one wants the other to look after his wife and keep an eye on his wife, and then some things go on between them. That's right. a story. Yeah, yeah. And the pirates might become an Al Qaeda story mm. on a mm. ship that's a thousand feet long, full of natural liquid gas. And there's a big sign. It must be ten feet tall. No smoking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 I even thought of that as a, as a title. No smoking. Do you, you write all the way through. Do you revise <laughs> as you go or do you revise after you get to the end? I revise as I go. When I'm finished with the book, it's done. Hand it over. Yeah. And do you, do you get edited a lot or do they? I don't get edited. You know. <laughs> because I'm, I'm sure of the book. There may be s s something. So, so what if some editor in New York says, no, 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 Elmore, come on, this doesn't work. This chapter doesn't work. Go back and redo it. Well, they, I've had over the last, say, uh, I would say the last 20 years, I haven't had that. Somebody go back and say, redo this, Jack. Yeah, yes. no. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> but it's back when I had Jackie Farber was my editor and Marjorie Brayman was an editor, uh, they would suggest something. And, and I'd say, okay, you, you'd Don. Look at it. Yeah. But it, it, wasn't any, it wasn't really important. Don Fine was an editor, yeah. and he was a good editor. What and, would makes a good editor? Well, he would, he would I, I say, there's something wrong here between page, well, in the first 105 pages. There's something that, that isn't quite right. It seems to slow down. And he says, cut the first chapter in half, and you're all right, and you'll be fine. Yeah. And, and Don Fine, you'd call him up. No, he'd call up, and then I'd have to wait for him. He's got his hand over the phone. He's screaming at people, telling them, he's just read them out. And, and finally, he gets off. He, he puts his, takes his hand out. And you can hear him. I can hear him, muffled, yeah. but I can hear him. And he says, hello, in a soft... <laughs> you mean kind, say, of, kind of a soft hello? Yeah, always. And I say, why are you... You're going to have a heart attack. And, and you keep going like that. And he said, my doctor says to let it out. <laughs> I said it shouldn't be in there to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, it's exactly yeah. right. Now, did you finally, did you write a book called The Rules of Writing? My, ten, write? my ten rules. My ten yeah, rules. What are your ten rules? Can you remember all ten of them? Oh, uh, I'm not oh, give sure. Me seven. Give, me, well, give me those you remember. Uh, never open with weather. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's w -E -H. good. W-E-H. <laughs> yes. Uh, never use a prologue. Right. Prologue's a little backstory. You can put it in anywhere you want. <laughs> Work it in later. Yeah. Never use any verb other than said <laughs> to indicate someone speaking. Yes. And never, ever use an adverb to modify said. Ad, all adverbs do is delay. The, it, it, it's just a little stop in the flow yeah, of your, of your prose. Said quickly does, is not necessary to use quickly. No. Jeez. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> okay, what then, else? These are good rules. I like them all so right. far. <clears throat> Never use <laughs> suddenly <laughs> or all hell broke loose. <laughs> um, what is something else? Uh, oh, if it sounds like writing, rewrite it. Mm -hmm. you're, you're starting to sound like someone who sells uh, a million books. That's about everything true. If it sounds like you wrote it, then yeah. it's not, it doesn't, it's not like conversation. It's then, not like talk, right. talk. And if, as an example, they say, well, what does that mean? I say, well, upon entering the room, I said, you don't want to say upon entering the room. Exactly. You know, it, <laughs> it's Nobody writing. would say upon entering the room, he... It's writing. Yeah. And... Leave out the parts that readers tend to skip. But how do you know what they skip? There are big, thick passages <laughs> that of you 
thinking you're writing, describing something, the ocean or something like that. And if, unless you're good at it, stay away from descriptions. Do it the do the description from the from the point of view of the character. He looks up at the rain coming down and he yells out an obscenity, and you know what he thinks of this rain. You know, it's, it's, it's interrupting his life. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. This book is called Road Dogs. Elmer Leonard. Um, this is number forty-three. Well, there he is in the back. Chicago Tribune. No one is Leonard's equal. Time, the hottest thriller writer in the U.S. New York Times, the greatest crime writer of our time, perhaps ever. Washington Post, crime fiction's greatest living practitioner. Well, then I don't think you need all this praise, do no, you? Well, see, then when a reviewer he reads all exactly that, right? He, and he says, "Well, well this I is know not so great. I don't th think so." And then he'll list five or six guys that he thinks uh, are as good, or, if not better, yeah. including. Uh, Father Brown or whatever. No, I, I, it's going. Dan Brown? No. Da Vinci Code? No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you loved it that much, did you? I, I, I had trouble with the first paragraph. <laughs> the, the Times. Yeah, but you wish you could sell so many. Well, I, I sell enough. Well, yes, you do. <laughs> the, 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 the Times asked me to uh, review one of. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Who did all the military stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, Tom Clancy. Clancy, and I said, <laughs> "How long is it?" And they said, "Oh, it's only like 450 pages." I said, "I don't read books that are more than 300. You'll have to get somebody else." Again, Road Dogs, Elmore Leonard. Thank you, my friend. Great to see you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.